Hi, I'm Trisha. I'm a grad student and teacher who bartends, makes comics, and likes hiking. What could I possibly have in common with Marjorie Kemp, medieval Christian mystic? Once I started to read her book, I was surprised to find that I did connect with this woman for a few reasons. Marjorie had a husband and 14 children. After some visions and conversations with God, Marjorie decided to leave home to go on pilgrimage. She traveled far and wide, alone, and she faced a lot of criticism from the people around her. This was partially because she was always crying and sobbing about how much she loved God, but also undoubtedly faced some misogyny. She's asked if she has her husband's permission to be traveling alone, and some of the men she meets seem to be afraid that Marjorie is setting a bad example for their wives. I've never been on a religious pilgrimage, but I did hike the long trail last summer. It's a 272-mile trail from Canada to Massachusetts through Vermont. I love long-distance hiking, so I looked forward to spending a few weeks alone on the trail and in my tent, with occasional stops at hostels and hotels. When I shared my plans, I found I was getting lots of discouragement from family, friends, acquaintances, and people I barely knew at all. I'm part of a women's long trail hiking group on Facebook, and I found other women commiserating about the same thing. People worried we were being reckless and stupid, asking for trouble. Why do we insist on going alone? I met lots of solo hiking men on the trail, and while some had worried mothers at home, they didn't get as many negative, cynical responses as we did. Still, I went, and a determination to travel alone doesn't mean you're not afraid. I was afraid, and Marjorie Kemp was too. Several times in her book, she prays for safety from sexual assault, theft, and bad weather. She also worries about running out of money. These were my fears, and the fears of other women I spoke to. Some of us brought knives and mace. We'd ride up on good places to stealth camp in case someone creepy was at a shelter or a campsite. We brought GPS devices, gear for bad weather. We tried to save money by hitchhiking through small Vermont towns together. Like Marjorie, we were afraid, but we were prepared. Of course, on a medieval religious pilgrimage, one wasn't ever really alone. It was a social affair. Marjorie got along with some people, meeting priests and holy women who believed in her and inspired her, and a lot of her fellow travelers couldn't stand her. Of course, she was arrested and tried for heresy several times, too. The Long Trail isn't any less social than Marge's pilgrimage. Most nights I stayed near shelters, and nearly every night I met a new crew of hikers, some I go on, along with and some I couldn't stand. I can't say that my trip was a religious journey, but there was something soul-refreshing and contemplative about it. An excerpt from my journal on July 18th reads, Tonight I set up my tent, made dinner, and ate it sitting on the ground in the sun. I sat there long after I'd finished, just listening to everything around me. This little red squirrel kept creeping up close to me and then darting away. I wish I could name all of the bird sounds and plants and trails left by animals. I really believe there is something to be gained from walking and sitting outside quietly. That's one more connection I feel to Marjorie Kemp. We both felt compelled to record our experiences.